<laughs> Hello, Oreo. You saw the gym? Oh. Okay, this question involves limit, derivative, and integral. The three most important things in calculus right here. Let's take a look of the limit as h goes to 0, 1 over h, times the integral from pi over 4 to pi over 4 plus h, and then here we have sin x over x, and of course the dx. It looks pretty crazy, but we can still approach this the usual way, namely inside out, okay? And if you look at this, ideally speaking, if I can just integrate this function and then plug in numbers, and at the end do the limit, that will be it, right? However, the issue is that I cannot really integrate sin x over x because it's antiderivative right here, it's not elementary. What does that mean? That means I cannot express this antiderivative right here with sine, cosine, polynomials, whatsoever, right? So we don't have a nice answer for that. But we do know that sine x over x has an antiderivative because this is a continuous from pi over 4 to pi over 4 plus h. The only bad x value here is x equal to 0, okay? So here is how we can approach in this kind of situation. I just cannot tell you a explicit form for the antiderivative, but I can tell you we can say something like this. Let capital F of x be an antiderivative, an antiderivative of sin x over x, right? And what does this mean? I.e., that is, when you differentiate capital F of x, we are going to get sin x over x, right? So as I said, this is continuous and it's actually doable, but I will just write it down as f of x. So now, here is the deal. We'll just continue this in black and blue, right? For some reason. Anyway, we'll write this down. Here we have the limit as h goes to 0. And by the way, if you're about to come, we can use Laputal's rule. Just don't do that, all right? Just, just wait for it. Anyway, we have 1 over h. And now, the deal is that I'm going to integrate sin x over x. I have an answer for you. That answer is capital F of x, right? So I did that, okay? And the usual thing is, of course, we plug in numbers. So I'm going to plug in pi over 4 and pi over 4 plus h. Of course, we do this first and then do that. So this is going to be the limit as h goes to 0. And if you look at this part here, I'm going to plug in pi over 4 plus h in here, right? Into this x. And let me just write that down uh, on the numerator. So we have f of pi over 4 plus h. And then we are going to plug in pi over 4 into this x, and then we subtract, right? So we minus capital F of pi over 4, like that. So I put this down on the numerator. And then this h is in the denominator, so I would just say this over h, okay? And now, what does this look like? We have the limit as h approaching 0. And whenever you are seeing h, you should recall, you should be aware, hey, that's a definition of derivative coming up, right? And in fact, we have that. Check this out. This is what? This is f of pi over 4 plus h minus f of pi over 4 all over h. What does this mean? Well, let me just recall this for you guys on the side, okay? So recall that this is just the definition of derivative, okay? If my marker works, that'll be great. Anyway, so I'll just tell you f prime of some number a, okay? f prime of some number a, and just to match notation, I can also say capital F prime of a. This right here, by definition, this is the limit as h goes to zero, and then on the top, we have whatever this is, which is capital F, all right? Just the original. No prime yet, all right? Anyway, A is the input, so I put on A, and then we add H, and then we minus F of A, and then O over H. This right here is the definition of derivative of capital F at X is equal to A. And now, this is what we have as well, right? So, this, I will just tell you, this means, this represents f prime, and if you look at the input value for the x, it's just precisely pi over 4, isn't it? So this means f prime of 
pi over 4 where f of x is equal to what? Well, f of x, I don't know. Because f of x is just an antiderivative of that. I really don't know what this is. So usually, we will be able to tell what capital F of x is, right? But look at This right here represents f prime of pi over 4. What do we have here? f of x is an antiderivative of sine x over x, but I just couldn't write down a nice formula here on the right-hand side. That's why I crossed it out. But I don't really need to worry about this part, because it says f prime of x will be sine x over x, isn't it? So I know f prime of x, let me just put this down for you guys. We know that f prime of x, by what I told you guys right here already, this has to be sine x over x. Right? So of course, I can say f prime of pi over 4. All we have to do is to plug in pi over 4 into this x and that x. So this is equal to, on the top, we have sine of pi over 4. And on the bottom, we have pi over 4 into this x. So we'll just write this down nicely, pi over 4. OK? OK, now, what is sine of pi over 4? You have two choices to do it, right? You can write it down as uh, 1 over square root of 2, or you can also write it down as square root of 2 over 2. Up to you, but we are all adults now. We don't have to rationalize the denominator. So for sine of pi over 4, let me just put it down as 1 over square root of 2, okay? And then we have this over pi over 4. And now it like, depends on how you want to simplify this complex fraction, I will just do it 1 over square root of 2 times the reciprocal of this guy, which is 4 on the top now, over pi on the bottom, alright? Because we are dividing pi over 4, which is the same as multiplying by 4 over pi. And now, how can we simplify this more? Up to you. I will show you guys the gains the way that I did it in the past. I will break down 4 as square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2 times square root of 2. And the reason I want to do this is so that this group 2 and that group 2 cancel out, okay? Anyway, as you can see, square root of 2 times this, this group of 2, together it's just a regular 2, right? So I'll put down regular 2, and we still have one more square root of 2, and then we divide it by pi, and because I cannot rationalize pi, whatever. This is it, 2 square root of 2 over pi, this is the answer. Where is the derivative? Well, I have the prime right notation here. And where's the integral? Of course, that's the integral. And where's the limit? Obviously, right? Really cool, isn't it? And of course, you could have say something like uh, plug in numbers and do L'Hopital's rule and then use FTC1, but I think that kind of defeats the purpose. This right here, it's mainly an exercise to talk about the definition of derivative like this, okay? Anyway, that's it. <laughs>